In this episode, I complete the passage to New Zealand after almost bailing to New Caledonia and then sailing hard upwind and south for six days in easterly winds. We motor sailed across the high pressure ridge at the center of the high pressure system that generated the easterlies and eventually reached a short lived low pressure system with northerlies that allowed great progress southeast towards New Zealand followed by light southwest breeze for the final two days. Out, 8 a.m., Monday the 13th. And last night we reached the edges of the ridge of high pressure that's blocking us from getting down south to the westerlies to go back east to New Zealand, which is over there. I guess we could motor straight there into the little remaining breeze, but prefer to try to motor sail. You can see that I've got the jib off the uh, furler, getting ready to put the Genoa up. So I'll wait until the sun, which is unbelievably intense, bouncing off the water here, is a little bit higher. Anyway, with any luck, we will get across this ridge of high pressure today. By this evening, we should be sailing in a westerly instead of an easterly. And that should take us all the way to New Zealand. It's about 300 miles, so once we pick up the wind, it should take three days. I estimate Friday at the latest. Well, later on on Monday the 12th, November, we are close to the center of the high pressure. We had breeze from the east most of the morning. Now it's lunchtime. Been motoring for nine hours now since 3 a.m. Just waiting, waiting, waiting for the wind to start coming from the west. Then we'll know that we're halfway through. Meanwhile, I'm getting the Genoa ready. Here it is all laid out for beat up thing and uh, <clears throat> got it ready to hoist once we get westerlies then it can hoist on this side nice and easy meanwhile seeing all sorts of interesting things in the water here let me see if i can zoom in on one of them there some sort of jelly but not certain exactly what they are. There's one there. Got a, There's another one, and another one, and another one. Sort of white and orange, sort of, mm, don't want to call it a head, but, and then a translucent body. Uh, they go by so quickly, I should slow down. There's one there, whoops. Yeah, it's some kind of jelly. Anyway. Whoa, and here's a real jellyfish. Look at that. I've been seeing some really big ones with that. All right. What fun. It's lovely as long as you have an engine that can keep you going. And so far, our engine is keeping going. If you want to see... Oh, here's a man of war. If you want to see what happens if you don't have an engine... Oh, there's little fish swimming around it. Wow, maybe it, it's protection in the uh, tentacles. If you want to see what it's like if you don't have an engine, go watch the episode of Holly, aka the Wind Hippie on Gecko, last year going down to New Zealand. She and her sister got stuck in a high pressure like this for at least two days. Now well, we've been motoring for 14 hours now, it's five o'clock. And our only hope is this large bank of clouds to the west. I can only hope that is telling us that there's going to be westerlies in it eventually, but the forecast suggests maybe until midnight before that arrives. Yeah. Oh well. This is what it is. Luckily, the engine is still working. I later estimated that if we had drifted for 28 hours without using the engine, the high pressure system would eventually have moved off east and the low pressure would have picked us up, 
But that would have been a miserable day and a bit. Ah, it's Tuesday the 14th and what a difference a day makes. Just look at this. We finally picked up the new wind. On the other side of the high. It's a strong northwesterly. And we are just barreling along. Damn, we motored for 21 hours yesterday. From 3 a.m. till midnight. And uh, well, this is the reward. Fantastic downwind sailing. Let me show you the sail configuration. To stabilize things, got a stay sail is out on the left, to port, to windward, and that gives the wind vane a chance at steering behind there. It's the Genoa, just a fill or two in it, just to keep things under control. And the main I still have at one reef. I think pretty soon we go down to two reefs. We have brilliant, beautiful sunshine. Oh man, I finally got to sleep and got a couple of hours sleep and up at seven this morning. Wow, what a day. We're barreling down to New Zealand, which is dead ahead of us. 200 miles to go. Tuesday the 14th and our northerly, it's actually a northerly rather than a westerly because it turns out this is the front edge of a very small low that's only going to last for one day and then we have becalmed again but anyway I wanted to show you what it's like at the other end of the boat and looking backwards from the bow damn the boat moves all over the place uh, downwind conditions, broad reaching here. And, yeah, oh. The bow wave here is constantly roaring. Poor old dinghy surviving. And everything else is fine. We've got two reefs in the main. Fiji flag still up there. That'll come down tomorrow. Quarantine flag and oh yeah. the other flags. Let me see if I can show you that. The American and South African flags are struggling a bit. Yeah, don't want to fall overboard. And uh, yeah, the American flag was a rescue from a dumpster. Don't think that's what you're supposed to do with American flags. South African has survived two seasons. It's about two thirds gone. I mean, well, two thirds still remaining. And I've got another one for the American flag. I'll put that up when I get to New Zealand. I'm not fishing today. There's no point. It's only today and tomorrow. I caught a decent sized fish. It'd be a waste. Having said that, I was tempted to put out a line and lo and behold, landed what I later identified as an albacore tuna, the kind sold in cans as white tuna. It provided six meals in these two days and I used the rest to tempt passing petrels into range so that I could identify them. Well, it's still Monday 14th, I think so. It's pretty lively out here. This strong northerly that started at midnight is building and building. Of course, the waves are building with it, and we get slewed around by them like that. Because we are on a broad reach across the bow. That's too much. Oh, I'm going to have to get these sails down eventually. Let's just try to get back on the course here. Just push a little bit, just get it back. That's the first time the wind vane has failed to keep us on course for the whole day. Just when I'm videoing. Anyway, yeah, caught a tuna, which is pretty cool. I haven't caught a fish in a long time. And uh, hopefully it's reasonably edible. I'm not sure what kind. Just was hoping we'd get some big waves, but instead we're getting slew.
turned around every which way instead of surfing them. Here's some coming now. Maybe we can get some surfs out of these guys. Nope, not that one. Not this one either. We're just going too, too far sideways. Anyway, this is supposed to last until about midnight tonight. And then a front comes through and it dies away and we might be stuck with yet another becalmed high pressure zone. It would be a royal pain right between us and New Zealand. Anyway, this gives you a sense of how rough it is. Oh, it's Wednesday the 15th of November. Ah, I've been motoring for 12 hours since about midnight. And now we have a lovely little breeze coming from the west. So, we have full mainsail up. You can't see it, but we have the full Genoa and of course the staysail. And look at what we got. The land of the long white cloud. New Zealand, finally. And zoom in. You see a nice bunch of land there all the way along and that's North Cape up at the end there wow all right I wasn't so happy about all of this last night when it was raining and miserable and lumpy and I was getting tossed around but today is another day and just a few minutes ago when I'd finished my lunch of tuna that I caught yesterday a royal albatross flew right up to us, glided past and carried on. Oh my goodness, that was gorgeous. Wow, wow, wow. We finally made it to New Zealand. I was geographically challenged in that clip. North Cape is the larger, higher, nearby easterly point, while the distant Cape to the west is Cape Reinja. And here is an image of a royal albatross in flight, about as close as mine came, by Paul Brooks on the Cornell Ornithology Lab's eBird website. And end of a gorgeous day. There's a sailboat near us, right by the sun there. Probably can't see it, maybe just that little dot. But there's North Cape. We passed it at about five o'clock, seven o'clock now. We are going across the Great Exhibition Bay and headed towards Cape Brett, way the heck over there somewhere, and then into Opur. And it is gorgeous. So happy to have made it to New Zealand. There's the last glimmer of the sun. Let's see if we get a green flash. Probably not because there's a little bit of land. There's a slight, slight one. This was to be our last sunset almost over water, and that night I did not sleep well, partly because of the proximity of land, and partly because three other sailboats were converging with and passing us, and my AIS alarm kept going off. And here is our course over the last day and a half, approaching the famous check-in port of Opur. Ah, oh, it's 8 o'clock on Thursday, November the 16th. And we have made it to New Zealand. This is the, ah, forget the name of it, something rock marks the entrance to the Bay of Islands, which is this bay all the way over here. Cape Brett in the sun there, back around. And that's where we're going into the Bay of Islands to go up to Opur, which is our check-in port. Oh, it's such a rugged coast, goodness me. It's totally different from where I've been. And there's where we came from. Way back there, even further. Zoom in a bit and just come back across. Ah, oh, it's a gorgeous day again. Nice breeze coming in, motor sailed all night. And now we're straight into it, so I'm just gonna have to Motor straight in. Look at this mansion. Let's see if we zoom in anymore. No, a huge mansion on this hill. It's like they have the whole place to themselves. Wow. 
I gotta look up the name of this damn rock. All right, probably four hours to get into a pool. It's way the heck up the, uh, the bay there. Okay, I have the name straight now. This is called Tiki Tiki Rock. It's absolutely covered with seabirds, presumably nesting all over it, covered with guano as well. And then on the other side here is Harateki Island, which is just the sort of big rockish thing in the front here. And then behind the green hill with the mansion on it is Cape Wikiki. All Maori names, obviously, and very Polynesian sounding, which is appropriate. Oh, we are going all the way in there. Oh, this is called Battleship Rock, and uh, there's a bunch of other battleships. One, two, three, and one at the back there, four. Apparently a hard layer, I guess, of basalt, but heck, I'm not a geologist. And yet again, covered with seabirds nesting, which is kind of cool. I'm not sure I can see it even zoomed in here, but quite a little dots. And all these lines. Oh, and here's a penguin. Two penguins. Cute. All right. Maybe the same pygmy penguins, or what are they called? Fairy penguins that they have in Australia. I have to look it up. We're going to go around the corner here and then up to Opua. So, this is the quarantine dock at Opua, it's completely detached from land and so here's sea change, she's in pretty good shape other than the jib torn to pieces. Look at the tidal range here that they're prepared for. Monster, monster dock and it goes on for a long, long way and the officials come with a dinghy to uh, check you in and sort you out. So there's no contact with land until you've been approved out of here. This is uh, unbelievable. An American boat out of Bellingham. A lovely couple, Morgan and Audrey and their daughter Soleil. They followed us in and beat us by five minutes. Really magnificent 44 footer or something. And it's a big social scene here. Everybody's greeting everybody else and exchanging stories. Here's a beautiful Amel, 60 or something. And uh, here's Morgan and Audrey. How are you? And look at these boats. Look at this beauty. Wow, out of France. That's a proud French flag there. Look at this classic wooden mast, wooden boom, wow, beautiful bowsprit on it. And then here's all the boats in the background. In fact, that looks like Nareda there, the boat with the uh, burgundy center cockpit there. I'm pretty sure that's John Socrates, Nareda. Uh, I'm going to be staying here for a couple of days. I'm in B7, so that's right next to her, just in here. Very cool. It goes on and on and on. Look at the stock. There's the end of it over there. I'm not going to walk all the way. Can accommodate scores and scores of boats. Very cool. Even look at this because you're not allowed off and you're not allowed to use your regular toilet facilities. You even got a toilet just to keep people happy. Here's the, all the anchored and moored boats out here. It's a huge, huge sailing area. Now we've got a really nice easterly breeze blowing through here. And um, I'll just walk up to the rest of it. This is going to take a little while. God, what an amazing quarantine dock compared with the miserable concrete docks that we had to deal with in Tonga. This is really something else. It's kind of strange. Yeah, lots of stuff to do. 
I guess sometimes they have tall boats. You need to have a set of stairs to get on them. And, uh, where'd you folks come down from? Where'd you come down from? steel but here's the lagoon 500 ohana absolutely amazing big boat it's a kiwi boat they just went and spent six months cruising around fiji and vanuatu and new caledonia sea change again just want to show you jack iron quickly and then we'll be done this is trilogy they came past me last night got in here I presume either last night or early this morning you guys kept me awake last night with your AIS oh, yeah. yes you, you were passing me but I don't do AIS so you didn't see me <laughs> this is Jack Iron over here Kent Michelle There they are. Hey guys, say hello. This is Michelle and Kent and Jack Iron. Oh, we say hi. Yeah, yeah the, the YouTube eventually. Oh, okay. Eventually this will go up on YouTube. Good, good. But uh, here's their boat out of uh, St. Petersburg in uh, Florida, where they belong to the Yacht Club. Beautiful big double spreader. Great boat. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. And a good American flag too. Mine are completely worn out. <laughs> I got one that big too, I should put it up. And here we go. This is the end of it. And, uh, I don't know this boat. But here's all the information. All right, very good. Made it to New Zealand. Wonderful. The quarantine dock was so busy that morning that the officials were hard pressed to check us all in, so took our word for the condition of the bottom of the boat, our food on board, etc. They were all very professional, pleasant and efficient. A great welcome to New Zealand. In the final episode for this season, I sailed down the coast to the major sailing centre of Whangarei.